third nomination and first win. Wow, <laughs> just wow. Um, first of all, to my fellow nominees, it is an honor sharing the road with you. And of course, to the Progressive Snapshot app for giving good drivers the discounts, no, I have to say it, for giving good drivers the discounts they deserve. Safe driving! I'm Sarah. Matthew Bubble Tummy, the third. Getting judged on your name is tough. At Overstock, our name makes people think we sell Overstock goods, but it's really beautiful new furniture and home decor, all at Overstock prices. Most people come to L.A. with big dreams. We came with big appetites. With Expedia, you can book a flight, hotel, car, and activity all in one place. Everything you need to go. Expedia. You compare prices on everything. Flights, hotels, you name it. Now you can do it with life insurance. In just five minutes, Policy Genius compares quotes from top insurers to get you the best value. Compare and save with policygenius.com. One, two, three, four. The finest luxury items from the world's top designers, including Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Cartier, and hundreds more. All at up to 90% off retail, and each authenticated by our team of experts. Real luxury, unreal value. Only at the Real Real. Shop now and get 20% off with the code REAL at therealreal.com and in store. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase relieves your worst symptoms, including nasal congestion, which most pills don't. Flonase helps block six key inflammatory substances. Most pills only block one. Flonase. I'm not a big wig or a see anything oh, but I've got an idea, sir. Get Domo. It'll connect us to everything that's going on in the company. Get it for Gene, who's always cold, for the sales team, IT, and the warehouse crew. Give us the data we need, in one place, anywhere we need it. Help us do our jobs better. With Domo, we can run this place together. Well, that, that's your job, I guess. Her monarchy has defined England for generations. She's the boss. She runs the firm. It's a family business. Before you watch the royal wedding, take a closer look at the crown. Headliners, Queen Elizabeth II, tonight at 9 on MSNBC. Welcome back, everybody. President Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen's finances, are now part of Bob Mueller's investigation. Uh, in the past week, we've learned a lot more about how Cohen seemingly uh, capitalized on his role as the president's personal attorney. Multiple reports suggest that Cohen was able to draw in paid days from companies like AT&T and Novartis. And the Wall Street Journal says Cohen reached out to Ford but was in fact rejected. Ben Wittes, MSNBC legal analyst, uh, joining me along with Naveed Jamali, also MSNBC contributor. And back with me, Julia Ainsley, NBC News national security and justice reporter, and David K. Johnston of DCReport.org, uh, a solid way uh, to sort of finish up the show. Uh, ben, I'm gonna start with you. So, so the Wall Street Journal um, is reporting that Mueller has asked Ford uh, for records saying he wants to know why the company rejected uh, Michael Cohen, sort of please to to work together. What's at stake here, Ben? Uh, so I think it's completely unclear what's at stake here. Why, uh, why Mueller is interested in uh, Michael Cohen's overture to Ford and its rejection, say, as opposed to his successful uh, contracts with other companies, uh, is not at all clear to me. Um, and. Uh, you know, what exactly this has to do, the only thing I can think of is that it has some connection to some other matters that are sort of clearly within Mueller's as opposed to the Southern District of New York's uh, areas of focus. But I think what the, you know, what the backstory is behind that Wall Street Journal story is, is a bit opaque at this point. So, so Julia, uh, lawmakers are also trying to figure out whether the companies uh, that actually paid Cohen, like Novartis, like AT&T, actually got anything out of those payments uh, that they made to, to these, this shell company, um, Essential Consulting. What does it appear from your reporting, uh, Julia, that they're, that they're actually looking for? 
So what they're looking for is the same thing that New York investigators are looking for. I mean, a classic case of public corruption would be if he's really selling access to the president. If he is trying to get a quid pro quo where they pay him a certain amount and he's able to get them something very direct in return. But we've seen through cases like Governor McDonald from Virginia that this is a really hard kind of tricky area of law because lobbying happens all the time. People get paid to go push a certain agenda that could help a, a company down the road. But if it's very direct, if it's we're going to pay you this for this exact return, you can get into public corruption. And then the other piece of this is that Michael Cohen was not registered as a lobbyist. I, I've heard some people pick apart that a little bit and say a lobbyist needs to do this if they're talking to more than one U.S. official and perhaps he was only talking to one, the president himself. But he's definitely getting into murky territory and that's something that uh, not necessarily Mueller is looking into right now, but definitely New York prosecutors and then of course Congress too because everyone wants to know are we living under an administration where you have to pay to play that that really is it's the seat of of corruption in politics so, so David I want to talk about Giuliani's whole role in this or what exactly he is or is not saying or the missteps that he's making and it seems like he's making a lot these days uh, he actually said uh, that the president had no knowledge of the payments that were made to Cohen and that he's ne he was actually never lobbied he originally cited the president's sort of opposition to the AT&T Time Warner merger as proof saying the president stopped it but then he actually had to backtrack that to clarify what he said mm -hmm. and that the president didn't intervene in in the case. How long do you see Rudy Giuliani continuing to sort of make these unforced errors and still be out there uh, talking and speaking on behalf of the president as his attorney with regards to the Russia investigation? And is there a sort of trust issue that's going to be uh, eroded between the president and Giuliani as he continues to make these missteps? Yes, but I'm not sure they're unforced errors. Donald yeah. has a very long history of, was it me you were asking that question to? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, has a very long history of muddying waters that are clear. And look at the discussion we're having. We're talking about whether this was pay to play. The same set of facts and the statements made by the three companies suggest that this could have been extraction, that is extortion rather than bribery, which is the same crime from different points of view, basically. Uh, so uh, Giuliani making statements that turn out not to be so comes out of an old Roy Cohn playbook about confuse everybody about what the facts are, a technique, by the way, that was very important to the Soviets in maintaining control. Don't be able to trust anything you hear. Who wins? Whoever's in power. So you think this is all a concerted effort on behalf of the White House? It's all sort of, I, it's, all, it's all kind of rehearsed. <clears throat> it's been talked about. They know exactly what they're doing. Well, they may or may not know what they're doing, but it is absolutely consistent with what Trump has done in the 30 years I've known him of uh, saying multiple things that contradict and confuse the situation, having his agents do the same thing so that it's confusing as to what's going on. It is consistent with that pattern of behavior. So, Naveed, we're hearing sort of deflect from the White House. We're hearing confusion from the White House or confused people, to say the least. And then we're also hearing now wrap it up and we're hearing that now from the vice president mike pence uh on cnn let's take a listen to the hymn and then we'll talk it's been uh, about a year since this investigation began uh, our administration has provided over a million documents we fully cooperated in it and in the interest of the country i think it's time to wrap it up and i would very respectfully encourage the special counsel and his team to to, to bring their work to completion Obviously, Andrea Mitchell has not left and gone to CNN. She is safely here at MSNBC. So that was an interview with our very own awesome Andrea Mitchell. So, so what do you make of that, Naveed? You work for the FBI. Is a year a long investigation for them? Is it, is it time to wrap it up? Or is he sort of jumping the gun on this, the vice president? Which was a pretty surprising statement from the vice president, uh, to say the least. I don't think people were necessarily expecting to hear that from him. Well, uh, he, he's clearly politically, politically motivated. There's, there, he's a biased, uh, you know, uh, voice in this. But I want to take a step back here because there's pay to play and there's lobbying. But the part here that intrigues me the most is the context of which we have to look at this, which is one, the intelligence community has assessed that Russia tried to interfere with our election. We have an indictment against 13 Russians for doing exactly that. We have numerous members of the administration and the and the campaign that have pled guilty to charges. Um, we have numerous contact with the Russians that was unreported. What that tells me, Yasmin, is very clearly that, it, very simply, that the Russians were trying to make contact, trying to get into the Trump inner circle. So when you look at the pay to play, 
as someone who worked with the Russians, someone who understands how they work, they come through overt and legitimate manners. This is the this is that pathway, and I think a year is not enough to go into this. And we should follow it to where it actually comes to a culmination. All right, Benjamin sure. Wittes, uh, Navid Jamali, Julie Ainsley, and David K. Johnson. Thank you all uh, for joining us. I want to go back to my colleague Amy Mohadeen, who's standing by in Jerusalem, uh, where we are now just a couple of hours away from the opening of the U.S. Embassy there. Amy, I know it's going to be a long night ahead for you because we're going to be talking again in just a couple of hours. What are the key things uh, that you're going to be looking for in the coming days there, Eamon? Well, I think we're going to be looking for the situation on the ground and certainly the tone that comes out of the politicians on both sides. Obviously, the situation in Gaza, as we heard from our correspondent, is very dire. We're going to see how those protests play out over the next 48 hours. We are expecting uh, large crowds to once again continue those marches, the uh, great return march on the border with Gaza to take place tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to see if that turns into another deadly confrontation. But